Hello everyone, welcome to my retrospective on Merlin, a fantasy themed platform game published exclusively for the ZX Spectrum by Firebird Software in 1987. The man directly responsible for the game's creation, Mike Westlake, is an enigma, and I haven't been able to find out any information on him at all, apart from his list of video game credits, which include SAS Combat, Pieces of Eight, and Tarantula. But first, a bit of information on my history with the game. There was a now defunct local shop that used to sell Firebird software titles for their recommended price of $1.99 a pop. Merlin was one of these titles. To cut a long story short, I marched right down to the shop, two pounds clutched tightly in my hand. I bought the game, thanked everyone profusely, and took Merlin home. The game was in regular rotation on my computer in those far gone days of the late 80s, so I think it's fair to say I enjoyed it quite a bit. The question is, does Merlin stack up all these years later? Stick around to find out. Let's start from the top, the cassette cover. Merlin looks sinisterly over his cauldron of bubbling magic spells. He's probably thinking, don't you dare touch my shit. It took me long enough to collect all these magic stars needed for this spell. The spell in question will restore his magical powers. How did he lose them in the first place? We don't get to find out. Some things are better left unsaid. Anyway, the aim of the game is to guide Merlin through Camelot Castle and its immediate environment, collecting said magic stars. According to the inner inlay, we're actually guiding the hapless wizard around the kingdom of Camelot. As far as I'm aware though, Camelot is just a castle. The actual kingdom, according to some sources, was called Logress, which could have been in either Somerset, Glastonbury, Winchester, where a round table exists to this day in said city's Great Hall, or even in Wales. But I digress. Back to Merlin. We said that Merlin looks a bit mean on the front cover. Not so on the loading screen. There he looks positively happy, waving his magic wand around, sprinkling what could be magic dust, snowflakes, or maybe dunderuff. Ugh. If I had to hazard a guess as to why, I'd say that Merlin has collected all the stars at this point, which is why he's looking as happy as he is. His robe and wizard's hat are decorated in moons and stars, which is a nice touch. They didn't seem to be on his clothes before, so probably Merlin has magicked them into existence. Spot as well Camelot's castle to Merlin's right, looking nice and colourful. Occupying the bottom third of the screen is the in-game HUD. It's not the best looking loading screen I've seen, but it does the job. Then we come to what could be seen as a title slash control screen. The game's title, Merlin, is modestly tucked in the top centre of the screen. Merlin himself is not looking too happy here. His eyelids seem to be drooping, he could be sleepwalking or simply pensive, but who knows. To either side of him is brightly coloured text highlighting the different controls. Keeper to the left and joysticks to the right. Helpfully, both Kempston and Interface 2 joysticks are automatically configured when you plug them in. Directly below Merlin is a blue banner with scrolling text that shows both legal information and welcomes you to the Kingdom of Camelot. Below this, and once again occupying the bottom third of the screen, is the HUD, looking colourful as ever. Incidentally, and you might have guessed it already, but the HUD appears in game as well. Pressing enter on the keyboard starts the adventure, and do press it quickly, as the title music can get a little annoying after a while. Merlin, in case you didn't know it already, is a 2D side-scrolling flip-screen action-adventure game in which the player explores Camelot Castle and collects magic stars. There are around 30 screens in the game, and each one collects a certain amount of enemies to overcome and a certain number of stars to collect. Merlin cannot kill the enemies, he can only avoid them, as we've already seen. The locations are quite varied, from outside the castle grounds, throne room, bed chamber, cellar, library, and so on. There are downsides to the graphics, however, some that affect gameplay, others that don't. An example that doesn't affect gameplay is Attribute Clash, something that the Spectrum was notorious for. 
Basically, when Merlin walks in front of an object or sprite, he takes on the color attribute of that said object or sprite. Take a look at the images on screen for an example of what I mean. Compounding the issue is Merlin's limited movement. Our favorite wizard simply isn't the most nimble character around. He shuffles along stiffly in his slippers, at a rather sedate pace. But he is rather old to be fair. And his jump is, is more of a little hop. I think it's fair to say that Merlin doesn't have many frames of animation. And this is something that extends to the enemy sprites as well. Merlin's sheer size and movement makes playing the game feel a little awkward and cumbersome at times. Like many other Spectrum games, Merlin is tough, make no mistake. The game makes it harder for you than it should as well, not only in the ways we've already touched upon, but also in the ways enemies behave in this game. In and of themselves, the enemies follow simple patterns. What gets me is the way some enemies are programmed to deal damage slowly, and others are programmed to just kill you outright, causing you to lose a life right away. We start off the adventure with 10 by the way, which is quite generous, almost as if the programmer was aware of the issue. I'm still not 100% sure what the reasoning behind this was. My guess is the programmer realized that if all enemies just dealt damage slowly, the game would be too easy. So he programmed some enemies to deal one-shot insta-kill damage. The bad news is that the one-shot kill enemies are indistinguishable to enemies that drain your health slowly. That is, they weren't given unique sprites so you'd know how to distinguish them from regular enemies, for example. The good news is, it won't take you long to figure out which enemies are the ones that kill instantaneously and which don't. So far it seems I've been unduly hard on this game, and it's true that as an adult I can more plainly see its various limitations compared to when I was a kid. That said, however, I do find trying to get past each screen somewhat addictive. There's a modicum of fun trying to collect every star on each screen, and it's a challenge for sure. So I'll see myself pressing enter on the screen for another go more often than you think. If only they thought to add in-game music to liven up proceedings a little bit. So, I'm getting to the end of this retrospective, and the question becomes, should you play Merlin? Well, if you're looking for a game that showcases the Spectrum's graphics capabilities, then go for it. If you're looking for a stiff challenge, and pun intended because you know the sprites move awkwardly and stiffly, Give it a go. You might find yourself getting hooked on trying to collect every star on every screen. For anyone else, there are other games that will probably pique your interest more. Some of them might even appear in future retrospectives. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this retrospective. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Bye!